A lot of the photo retouching techniques I've been covering include adjustment layers and things like brightness, contrast, levels, curves, exposure, hue, saturation, color balance. A lot of them are also up here. And we've been using some corrections such as the spot healing brush tool, the patch tool, and masking with layers. I also want to go over the raw filter because this is a really useful tool in Photoshop that we don't necessarily have to have a camera raw file for anymore. So if you have a camera raw file, go ahead and open up that. That's fine. If you have a JPEG, open that up and we can go to filter and then camera raw filter right here. And the camera off filter is very powerful. A lot of the things right here are similar or exactly the same to things that we've been going over. For example, uh, temperature and tint and uh, things like saturation and vibrance and clarity. We can adjust that over in different menus. But in the camera raw filter, these are a bunch of different menus all represented just here in one panel. And this is under the basic tab. If you look up at the top up here, we have the zoom tool. Of course, we can zoom in and zoom out. We have the hand tool that we can move around on the canvas. And the white balance tool is we don't click somewhere that's going to be completely white or black. It's if you find an area that's kind of grayish. So say just right here. That doesn't very well, work very well. Let's try over. Trying to ring maybe. So that works okay. Uh, so you can see that effect with the white balance and you can also just go to as shot how it, act it was actually shot you can go to auto and it will try to figure it out but i highly suggest doing this manually we as the photographers looking at the photo can do a lot better job than photoshop can with the auto algorithm so if you do as shot that's the original if you do custom or there's auto it's trying to fix the white balance so i'll just keep it on the default for now if we took a photo inside and we had the white balance set to something like natural or daylight or some custom setting meant for outside, of course it's going to look a little bit yellowish, a little warm. So we could bring that slider over to the left to cool it off. And in the same way, if we took a photo outside and we had a setting, for example, a tungsten incandescent or some kind of indoor preset or a, a manually entered white balance and it just looks too bluish and too cool, we could bring it over to the right and warm it up. All right, we can also adjust the tint. If you click on color sampler tool, you know, in Photoshop, you have four areas that you can monitor as you're making adjustments. In this camera raw, we actually have nine. So you can click in different areas and monitor nine different areas. And if you try to add another one, it'll say, hey, you can only do nine and just clear the samplers. The targeted adjustment tool, is pretty useful if you have an area kind of like in some of the panels we've been working with some of those have a targeted adjustment tool as well it's if you just click and drag somewhere in there it's gonna look at that hue and we can click and drag left and right to adjust it so by default it's doing the the tone curve over here all right if you click and hold instead of the parametric curve which is similar to the you know the curves uh, you could go to hue and that'll pull, that'll pull up the hue, saturation, luminance. So if I click and drag, it will adjust those hues. So it's adjusting the oranges and the reds to a smaller extent. We also can tell it to adjust the saturation, luminance, grayscale mix. So if I go to saturation, it'll adjust that. I'm going to luminance. You know, it's going to only adjust that area within a range compared to where we clicked. If you look down at the bottom here under basic again, we have exposure. Obviously you go to the left, it's going to make it look underexposed, overexposed on the right. So if it was underexposed a little bit, we can bring that to the right and try to correct that to an extent. Contrast, you're going to have more contrast to the right, less contrast to the left. And then highlights are just, just the highlighted areas will become brighter or darker. And then shadows, if you want to open up the shadows without affecting the highlights, we can bring the shadows up like that. So that can be useful in portraits when we have darker areas that we want to brighten up without overexposing areas that are already brighter. And then whites and blacks, if you click that and then click black over to the left or the right, it's just going to affect the very darkest and the brightest areas.
Sometimes you want to know if you do have any just completely white or completely black pixels in the photo. Here's a tip. You can actually hold Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac and then click and drag on the whites. And it kind of brings it in there. You can see there are some there. So if you let go of that, if you click and drag on the blacks and go to the left, it will tell you the darkest area. So it looks like right there. So if you're using the white balance correction we did earlier, you could use this in conjunction with that if you wanted to find out where the white, completely white and completely black parts of the photo are. Clarity is not good to use in portraits. I mean, unless you're going for like this comic book effect, uh, it's, it's not very good. If you go way to the left, it kind of has this hazy look. You go way to the right, it adds a lot of contrast that's better for landscapes compared to portrait photography. Vibrance can be helpful because it'll boost some of the background. It won't necessarily affect the skin tones that much. It won't really overdo it unless you really, really bring it way to the left or the right. And saturation is just similar to some of the other techniques we've been doing where we boost the saturation. And if you click up at the tab here, instead of basic, you can click on this tone curve. And by default, it says parametric. And what that is, is if you click and drag the highlights, it's going to bring that curve down a little bit and bring the highlights over to the right. We'll get brighter. And then the lights, same thing. We're just adjusting the levels of the light and then darks and then shadows. So if we're correcting the lighting in a portrait, this can be useful. If we want to use just the traditional curves, you can just click on point and then you can add points like so. And you can also affect just the specific individual channels like red, green, blue. And you have some custom settings here as well as some presets. And a lot of these menus, these tabs have presets that you can load. You can load settings, you can save the settings. If you find a technique you're doing that you like, we can save the settings and then load it later to use it in our portraits. In the next lecture, I'm going to be covering sharpening and smoothing portraits using this camera raw filter.